All right, mates, welcome back. JL Scott Fishing and Eats. Hope everybody is doing well this morning. We are going to talk about the Maury River in Virginia. This one gets a little bit personal for me um, just because of the history um, for myself and obviously the history attached to this river. Um, it kind of has come forward here in the last few years. Um, if you follow any of the socio sociopolitical uh, climate in the Commonwealth of Virginia. Um, so the Maury River is pretty unique in terms of any of the other rivers in Virginia in the sense that the Maury is only located in Rockbridge County. Most rivers like the James River traverse the whole state or the Shenandoah from north to south, the uh, James from west to east emptying into the bay, you know, the Potomac going all the way up splitting Virginia and Maryland and Virginia and West or West Virginia and Maryland all the way up. So in that regard, Maury is really, really unique. Um, it's not a very, very big river. It's not a very, very wide river in a lot of places. Um, and it has, wasn't always known as the Maury river. It really didn't become widely accepted as the Maury, um, until the death of Matthew Fontaine Maury. And I'll get into him in a few minutes. Um, it basically was the North, kind of like the North James, right? Because while the Maury, uh, basically is formed from the confluences of the calf pasture, um, and the little calf pasture, um, in the upper section, which is up here. Okay. It flows all the way down. I think it's about 30 miles, um, all the way down to the confluence with the James River at Glasgow, Virginia. Okay. So it's really not that, um, you know, uh, big of a river system. And yet it has a lot of intricate little things, um, that really, really make it unique. Now, obviously man has touched the Maury River. Um, as you can see here on the map, you're going to see that you've got, you know, medium size, I would say medium size, cities i still would call some of them still feel like towns to me um you know um along the maury um and so you've had that where it's been touched with dams and such okay um probably the most well-known dam is the one in buena vista okay it's about a 20-foot dam okay that's a portage dam that would be in the lower section, which is predominantly, like all our rivers, we try to break these up in the upper section, middle section, lower section. Um, the Maury River probably is most, um, most people who have seen the Maury River um, or think they have seen the Maury River is probably a better way of, of describing that. Um, typically see the Maury River um, traveling Interstate 81. Um, because it's a major, major interstate, right? Um, basically north south ish. Okay, other than ninety five, I think eighty one's probably like, you know, it's definitely the most traveled by truckers. Okay, let's just put it that way. Um, you know, making that short route uh to the northeast. Um that's usually all that people get a glimpse. And when you go across that, or you could probably cross it on US eleven, um, you know, as well, but 81 is pretty much the predominant thing. You know, Shenandoah has that kind of like thing where people always kind of, when you talk about the Shenandoah, people always relate it to a bridge. Um, you know, um, Maury, you know, it's probably 81. That's where most people, um, you know, get a glimpse of the Maury, um, which basically, you know, is a swift running river system. I mean, the upper section drops, I think it drops like 20 feet, 20, 22 feet um, through Goshen, through the pass, um, which is Whitewater, which is the what's called the upper section. Now, most people, um, when I say most people, I'm going to say predominant number of people for this river system fish the lower section. That tends to be the best fishing section, reportedly. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that... Um, there's no other fish in any of the other sections. That upper section is a very difficult section. Um, I learned that lesson uh, on a personal note uh, in 1989. Um, summer of 1989, um, I was getting ready to matriculate at Virginia Military Institute in August of, of, of 1989. 
um, and went to take classes at VMI, which is in Lexington, Virginia, which is in the lower section or middle section. Uh, I was in the middle section. Um, went to summer school, was taking four credit hours. Uh, I took English and I took uh, computer or something, whatever, uh, to get a jump start because uh, I was going to play. Div- I was going to play uh, Division One soccer. Uh, that was the goal, and I did. And um, wanted to get a jump so I could carry less credit hours my uh, first semester rat year at VMI. Um, if you know what that's know what that means, you know what that's all about. Um, and got a chance for my first experience fishing a bunch of places, really. Like, but for the most part, the Maury River, um, different parts of the Maury. Go visit and go visit a whole bunch of areas um, in and around Lexington and up. You know, in Rockbridge County, lots of stuff going on there in the summer because um, you're not really going to get to get to do that stuff when you're when you're matriculating as a rat at the Virginia military. And I'm sure it's like that today, though. There's it is a lot different today, um, obviously, than 1989. Um, there are now females at VMI. There's a whole bunch of different sociopolitical stuff, um, you know, that we've all dealt with. You guys know it. You guys watch the news. It's kind of ridiculous. Um, but we got to deal with it. Um, you know, I hate getting political on the channel. I just think a lot of it is crap. I think a lot of it is virtual signaling and you're going to learn this from Maury River. Like the Maury is named after Matthew Fontaine Maury. Most people do not know him. Now, if I said to you my history, okay, my namesakes, okay. For those of you, for those of the people who don't know me personally, my namesakes, my namesakes, the people that I am named after are Thomas, Jonathan, Stonewall Jackson. Okay, it's right outside the arch. Okay, at Virginia Military Institute, right, and Robert E. Lee, J. L. Jonathan Lee. Okay, Jonathan comes from Stonewall Jackson. Lee comes from Robert E. Lee. Okay, you know who those people are, right? But I bet you didn't know who Matthew Fontaine Maury is, right? But they still removed Matthew Fontaine Maury's statue from Monument Avenue in Richmond, Virginia in the last two years, through three years, to avert from, in large part, due to a virtual signaling African-American mayor, okay, in Richmond, Virginia, who attended James Madison University in Harrisonburg, okay, um, and was married, okay, to... And had an interracial marriage. Okay. So that's those are just the facts. That the guy, the guy freaking projects that everything's about racism, and yet a white American married him. Okay. So not all white people are racist. That's just a pretty easy identifiable thing, but that's how messed up Richmond is. And I lived there for virtually 40 years of my life. Um and it's just messed up. And they remove Matthew Fontaine Maury's um, statue. Okay, so Matthew Fontaine Maury, yes, had affiliations during the Civil War with the Confederacy, like most Virginians. Um, but Matthew Fontaine Maury was more than that. And that's why it's significant that the river is named after him. For the most part, it would not be named after him if he did not request that upon his death, he be laid, more or less, um, on the river. Okay. Um, and so it's, it's kind of important. He is the pathfinder of the seas. What does that mean? Okay. Oceanography. We would not have the physics of oceanography and the, you know, the engineering things of ships and all that are submarines. Okay. I think, I mean, just, just blows your mind that this guy has his monument removed for the most redonkulous reasons for which you don't even know him as being having anything to do in the Civil War. Most people don't. Most school-age children don't. You're not taught that in schools. He didn't rise during the war as a Confederate general that you would recognize at all. Everything that's talked about, go on his Wikipedia, okay? Everything that's talked about him is about the seas and oceanography, um, being the pathfinder of the seas. Um, And so, you know, in 2020, when they did all this mess about deconstructing Monument Avenue because it's racist, okay, 
this was a man who was anything but that. In fact, you could make the argument that what they did to this man's statue, in effect, was counterintuitive to everything that those people politically and socially stood for. And people were like, oh, Jay, what do, you, what do you mean? The guy was handicapped. Okay? He's sitting in his wheelchair. He's sitting in a wheelchair on a statue. He's got a Bible on his foot. He's got his book that he wrote, the physics of, I think it's the physics of oceanography. Okay? He didn't have a Confederate flag. He didn't have, he didn't have, that's not what was being celebrated by the people who put the statue there. Okay? In essence, which was the state. The state also funded the statue. The city of Richmond also funded the statue. Sure, that was it went up in the same period as a lot of statues to build out Monument Avenue. But it just gets ridiculous that to, le- to the extent of virtual signaling that these people will go to to destroy history. And that's what they've done. They've destroyed Monument Avenue. They destroy history. And, they, and, they, and they, you know what? Everything, every reaction has a reaction. We know that in fishing. If you know, in certain areas, if you don't stock fisheries, fishing goes down, predation, all these things. If we don't keep, you know, keep sustaining and, and, and making these things, a, a river system can ultimately, you know, die, right? Well, if you remove statues from Monument Avenue, like Matthew Fontaine Murray, um, people won't come. And there's your city of Richmond now with the economics of tourism plummeting. No more Japanese, no more foreign people from Europe coming to Richmond, Virginia, okay, experiencing Monument Avenue, experiencing the history. None of that anymore, thanks to that mayor and the movements, the political movements, which of course have all dead. They've all died because they were all BS, okay? They just were. Uh, they defrauded and defa- you know defrauded people. They fleeced people for their money for donations. Corporations, individuals. They got the they got the statues made, and they basically just desecrated statues. So, in my opinion, you know the the other statues people can make arguments over, but this particular guy, it was absolutely ridiculous the removal and how they removed it. And they just threw his statue on the back of a flatbed truck, like it was like okay, a handicapped guy with a Bible. How is that now? Think of it if you think of it. it that happened to any in any other scenario. That would be anti-religion because you removed a statue where a guy was celebrating his faith. You removed a statue where a guy was handicapped. Okay. Think about that from that social perspective. So it's just interesting. Okay. But anyway, he wanted to be um commemorated on the river. And that's when the name changed to Maury. Okay. Um probably don't teach you that in the history books, but that's kind of basically a you know comes down to it. So back to the fishing aspects of today's video. I apologize for my digression into the redonkulousness of Richmond city politics in Virginia these days and the former governor who ran the state and the Commonwealth of Virginia into the freaking ground um, for political purposes. And here we go. But I haven't really heard him about putting the statues back up yet. But I'm still I'm still waiting. Still listen for that. Probably too too close, too soon, right? Uh, upper section, like I said before, white water, big time white water draw. We got this up here in the Potomac as well, near the Great Falls area. Not a lot of people fish it. I liken it to that. I could be wrong. Speaking of which, I would I would be amiss if I did not mention that you do have an opportunity for guide services on the Maury River. You can use Maury River smallmouth. You can find them on Facebook, um, as well. Um, and I think they pretty much cover the whole river. Um, I would think, um, you know, throughout Rockbridge County, but my guess would be it's mostly, the, it's probably predominantly the middle and the lower section. But again, reach out to them, find out what they have going on. So I'm basically, one thing I will say about the upper section, um, and I learned this years and years ago, and uh, obviously I've not fished that upper, upper section, um, in a long, long time. It does have that trout aspect to it. And so when people, I get messages a lot of times from different river systems about baits and such, right? And one of the things that works in the Maury that I have found, doesn't really matter where you are, but predominantly trout were stocked in the upper sections, okay? They may still be, I, I, I'm not really sure. Um, um, but that was basically, could 
in the spring especially, you can kind of see that throughout the river. But the pattern still kind of works for you. So if you're kind of in a slump, if you're kind of in a whatever, one of the things that you can do is throw a changeup, okay? And what I mean by a changeup is fish understand intuitively about forage, right? Um, it's like us at the drive-thru. We know what we want, right? Usually, we're not staring at the drive-thru screen. We know what we want while we're, when, before we enter that drive-thru line. That's just how it works, right? Smallmouth are like, they know what they want. They know what they're used to seeing. They know what they want. They know what they like. And predominantly, in the trout would probably be a springtime thing. But you can get away with throwing trout patterns. Okay? Trout pattern, right? Try and get up to that so you can kind of see that. I love anything that is gold, silver. Um, I like in the river, Fermori River, if I'm throwing soft plastics to make sure I have some gold flake, silver flake, purple, red flake. Okay? Because there are trout species that have been and smallies are aware of that they know so it's not like it's like oh that's an oddball thing they're not going to run away from it okay um when you're in the summertime or uh or fall even though predominantly it's a spring kind of kind of pattern um and i think they're stocked in the spring uh in the upper section i still think they are i mean they were for years um but that doesn't mean the other fish and the fish are moving okay obviously we have dams now that kind of kind of obviously come into play here um but that or anything like that and for me in the fall i kind of take that a little bit and i know what kind of like baits tend to like work for me okay confidence baits works for me right and so i kind of tweak them a little to like play on that drive through smallie mentality okay they know what they like they know what they want and then i always make sure that I have a jerk bait, okay, in a trout pattern. And now, depending on the day, okay, this is my basic go to, okay, I usually throw this anywhere I go for if I'm gonna throw a jerk bait trout, okay, it's a basic color. Um, it's got pink, you probably can't really see that, but it's more pinky red down the middle. Um, as opposed to this one, which has green, okay, like emerald. So depending on overcast, depending on sunlight penetration, clear water, depending on what the situation is, these are the two that I predominantly always take with me, okay? Um, and I kind of roll with that. Now, any other conditions during the summertime, okay? Middle section, lower section, this is what we're talking about now. Rainbow trout and all that trout tend to brown, I think, up in the calf pasture. Um, they tend to be more in that upper section, but you, are, you see – Again, you can still use those patterns throughout the river system, okay? That's kind of what I'm getting at. So it's not a traditional color pattern. A lot of people probably aren't going to tell you, probably tell you that it's not going to work. It's not going to work. It does, okay? So fish different, all right? Um, because you're still using the same presentations, right? A popper, okay? Top water bait. Maybe you're using a whopper plopper. Maybe you're using a chatter bait. What colors are you going to use, right? Um, obviously, you can get away with white. Obviously, you can get away with uh, chartreuse and white, you know, things like that, depending on your weather conditions that work everywhere, okay? It's kind of a universal thing, universally accepted thing. Um, and so, the middle section here is basically Lexington. Now, you've got a series like BassCast, uh, BassCast series. Let's check this out. BassCast series has fished this area. Now, the one thing about BassCast is, one, you know, what I – there are things I like and things I don't like, and I hope people don't take that personally. Um, it's not personal. Like, it's just observations. I oftentimes don't like jointed events, okay? What I mean by that is conjoined, meaning, like, you can fish the Maury and the James, right? I don't like that, okay? Um, you know, as, you know, to support our fisheries. I'd rather just have a, have a James River event and 150-mile stretch, 60-mile stretch of the James River uh, from the confluence, you know, all the way maybe to Glasgow, up, okay? That's a probably like 50, 45, 40 some miles, right? Like something like that. And then a Maury River event, which would be from, I would say Lexington. You know, I wouldn't include the upper section just because of the danger and stuff like that, the whitewater, plus your, your, the weather conditions can pretty much destroy an event um, on this river system. 
Um, but you could do from Lexington, you know, the upper middle section and the lower section and provide tons, tons of water in that, tw- you know, 20 some mile radius for people to fish. Um, so they held their event this year on in June, June. Okay. Mm. Okay. It's tough. All right. Um, and they basically allowed anglers to fish, uh, this bottom area of the James river, I think to Snowden. Okay. All the way to Snowden the dam at Snowden. Okay. So you basically could have fished a small section of the James river. Um, I would have ended it at Glasgow and make it a pure Maury river event. That's just me. And then had, you know, one or two pure James river events, highlight the fisheries. Right. Um, and the other aspect I'll mention about these things is highlight the anglers that fish Virginia fisheries. That's another component that's getting lost. Um, maybe because of COVID, maybe because we don't have meetups, maybe because we don't have award ceremonies and stuff with a lot of these events anymore. But a lot of people don't know who these anglers are. Um, and to me, that falls on the organizer uh, of events um, because the, the, the anglers are the anglers and the smallmouth are the stars, not the tournament director. And if you're if you're involved in an event where the tournament director needs to be the star, needs to be the facial, the, the, the focus of everything and whatever, you know what? That's not what it's about. Okay. It's about the anglers and it's about the fish and it's about our rivers. And that's what we need to celebrate. It's not about tournament directors. Okay. That just, that stuff just always rubs me the wrong way. It's like we celebrate ter- tournament directors have a hard enough job as it is. I totally respect tournament directors, but we put tournament directors on these pedestals sometimes because they're the face of a tournament. And we forget about the people actually fishing the tournament and celebrating their successes, right? It's always outside podcasters. The kayak bass nation is a fabulous job for Hobie uh, and bass masters. Um, you know, highlighting the the yank the number one, number two angler. I think they just had a had a uh, another another uh, Hobie just had another event, um, and they had the New River guys on. You know, the, for Hobie. Um, you know, and that's great, but the, that's the series should do that. Like the, that's a part of, of running a series, in my opinion, is celebrating the river systems, the anglers, and the fish. Um, all right, soapbox ran over. Okay, so Maury River. Okay, had eighteen anglers competing in this event. Um, um, our boy Troy Wines won this event with seventy four point five zero. Okay, now. A lot of people may think, oh my, that's, that's uh, like the, the elitists in the kayak fishing community would be like, oh my God, 74, 74, that, you know, it's like, okay, it's June and look at all the other events throughout summer this year. And I mean, in top fisheries, what I mean by top fisheries is people who consider fisheries to be top. That doesn't mean that they are. A lot of times events keep going back to the same fisheries and it just gets embedded in our psyche that that must be a great fishery doesn't necessarily mean that it mean that it necessarily is a great fishery right or that the ones that they don't go to aren't great fishery remember most of these events are paid to come most of these events major events are paid by visitors bureau and tourist bureau that contribute five ten whatever grand to the event coming to their river systems to boost economics that's just the way it is so keep that in mind it's not always the best river systems it could just be the best city council economic development person in a town that's willing to go out and get and promote their river to these trails. So they come. So keep an eye on that. A lot of times these trails that return to the same place year after year have relationships with tourist bureaus and cities. Okay. That's why they're going back there. Okay. That's a business decision. That's not a fishing decision. All right. So a lot of other rivers, especially in Virginia, okay, don't get don't get a shot. Can't fit in the schedule because a lot of times April, May, June, you know, April, May, June are booked, right? Zach Hammersmith, 70.5. Adam Flint, 64.5. Jamie Childress, 64. Jamie would be your contact, okay, with Maury, Maury River Smallmouth. Um, Mike Brown, 60. And Jonathan Graham, 57, 25. That's your top six. Again, June 24th on the Maury River. That was a elevated water levels, by the way. Sometimes you can't look at these numbers and just be like in a vacuum. You got to understand what's happening with the weather. It was pretty nasty. 
uh, the water, rising water, all that kind of stuff um, for, for a river system like the Maury River for that event. Um, but you can always go on Turning X and research your rivers that you, if you're curious um, what the bites are, okay? Um, so that is your middle section, which is um, Lexington, Virginia, down to Buena Vista. And then we get into the lower section, which predominantly is what gets fished when you think about the Maury River. That's predominantly when people ask me, when people tell me, hey, we're going fishing. I ask where they're going fishing, and it's almost always the lower section, okay? Um, and it dumping into Glasgow, okay, which is the confluence with the Upper James River, all right? And so the floats that you can take a look at here, Maury River float trip information, you've got this available to you, which is going to list your actual floats and accesses along the sections of the Maury River. If you would like to have this forwarded to you, message me simply at JL Scott Fishing and Eats on Facebook. Just send me a Facebook message and I will send you the link to these floats on the Maury River. And if you need, need help tracking down a guide for the river, I will send you that information as well. So you basically shows you your float breakdown, right? Glen Maury Park, Buena Vista. That's the lower section, okay? So you're going to be going down, you're going, your float's going to be going down towards the James River, however you break it up. You could break it up in different sections, okay? In terms of how far do you want to go, all right? Glen Maury Park, seven miles to Miller's Dam, okay? This is a great, great float. It's one of the most predominant floats most people talk to me about. Ample parking, grassy blank launch canoes, rafts, upstream right side, Route 745 bridge. Kind of tells you the breakdown. Um, you know, tells you about the dams that you're going to come across. Um, I'm trying to think. Uh, some people, I think, put in from the from uh, – the street, the road. I'm pretty sure that's the stretch. I have to, let me ver- I'll have to verify that. Miller Dam to Locker Landing in Glasgow, five miles. That's another boom. Locker Dam is gonna Locker Landing is right before you get to the James River, um, and so you can combine the two. Glenmorey Park in the lower section to Locker Landing, twelve miles. Okay, twelve mile float. All right, it's an all day float. Okay, no doubt, no argument. That's a that's a day. That's a long. That's a day. If you're unless you just floating down the river, but if you're fishing, that's a day, okay? Um, remember the thing about the Maury and the Shenandoah, okay, about additional river access points and private property. You always want to make sure that you have permission to launch from private property, okay? You can't launch from private property in any of the tournaments. Most people understand that if you're a tournament angler. Um, some, some tournament anglers don't. They think if they have permission from the owner, then, then it's public, I don't know where that comes, that mindset comes from, um, because that's not ethical. That's not part of tournament competition, even if you're a tournament director, even if you're, you know, a leadership board of a tournament series, unless it's publicly act can be publicly accessed. And I liken it for folks if it's known public access, right? Like it's assumed and known it's public access. A state park is public access. A ramp, Virginia DWR, it's public access, right? These are known things. You don't have to ask anybody. If you have to ask someone if something, if they can access the river via it, mates, that should tell you that it's not public, okay? Um, and a quick search figures all this stuff out, right? Okay, so just keep that in mind. Don't trespass. Don't get out of your kayak. Don't get out of your boat on the Shenandoah, um, or the Maury River on private property because you're trespassing. I mean, that's just how it works. Um, you know, barring an emergency, most people are good. Most people are good with it. Um, you know, but still, you know, barring an emergency, you want to make sure that you understand that and you follow the safety guidelines as well, specified with you definitely upper section. You are going to be required to wear a life jacket. And if you don't, you're insane. Okay. Um, middle and lower sections, you obviously still should wear a PFD. Um, and you get your breakdowns here of your entire, entire Murray River contains excellent habitat and high density fish populations. Most common sport fish are smallmouth bass, obviously, rock bass, you get in some big rock bass, and red breast sunfish. Other warmer species that anglers might encounter include green sunfish, fall fish, bluegill, largemouth bass. The river runs through the ocean's past and is also stocked, here we go, by DWR with rainbow and brown trout between October and May. Okay? 
Again, October, fall fishing. October, fall fishing, okay? During the summertime, I like to throw that baby, okay? Just a bone color jerk or my crankbait, all right, if I'm not using soft plastics. But that is the Maury River, mates. Again, message me if you have any